already doing this fine Saturday. Coming in, super the drive. And this is the shift. Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in. Man, listen, man. I'm so glad to be connecting with you. Uh, be quite honest, I, I am re-recording this because the first recording sound did not come through. Uh, but this time, thing it looked like everything is copacetic. We're live in the house. If you're rocking with me, I want to say welcome on in. Thank you for taking time for connecting with your boy. It is my pleasure to be uh, to influence you today, to impact your life, to encourage you uh, to higher heights and higher levels, to the desired success you have for yourself, man. If you're rocking with me and you're catching the replay, Yep. Go ahead in the chat. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, share the feed, like the page, tag a friend, and tell them leadership is live. We we going live, baby. We we not playing with them. Um, if you're catching the replay, man, go ahead, drop RP in the chat. Let me know that you are watching the replay. I truly appreciate it. Uh, some of you are saying. Who is this dude and what is this leadership, man? Well, first, I am Dwayne Roberts and I am a male empowerment coach. I am a speaker and I am a leadership consultant. It's my aim and my desire as a leader, an influencer, an inducer that helps empower leaders and men to maximize their potential, create alignment, becoming their authentic self so they can thrive and live life uh, successfully. Yep. It's all about fertilizing your seed of potential. Yep. I want to awaken the deep, deepest parts of your mind, your soul, and your body. That lie dormant, man. I want you to connect with what's your higher self. Just that simple. I want you to understand that you can live life limitlessly if you will be willing to tap into all that God has given you, your potential. Just that simple. Here's my favorite quote by Nathan McCall, man. And he written in his book, Makes Me Wanna Holler, where it says, free your mind and the rest of you will follow. Just that simple. Free your mind and the rest of you will follow by Nathan McCall. Today, guys, I'm gonna share some, may share some biblical principles with you. You can also get some leadership principles as well as better understand your behavioral preferences. It's all about helping men leverage who they think they are to becoming the person that God has called them to be. Yep. Phenomenal, right? Phenomenal. I am so glad that you're taking time uh, to connect with your boy. Just that simple. So here we go, man. We're going to get ready to tap this thing right on off. Getting everything set up, man. Set up, set up, set up. So so how, how are you moving in 2023, man? We we about a month. Month about to come to an end, bro. <laughs> have, you, have you got started? Are you picking up momentum? Are you stuck? Where are you? Where, 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 is, where are you going in life? Where, what's happening right now, man? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening in life? You know, uh, I got it. We don't always want to expose ourselves. <laughs> we don't always want to share that, hey, I'm I'm challenged in this area. Things not looking like the way I want them to look. They don't feel how I think they should feel. And that's all right. It's all right. You know? I, 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 I just think that uh, sometimes the, the, the obstacles of life are, are, the, are the growing are growing pains. <laughs> just that simple, man. The growing pains. So, oh man, man, I'm good. I'm glad I'm glad you I'm glad you guys are rocking with me. Uh, I got yeah, I'm glad you're rocking with me. So here we go. Leadership, man. It's all about helping you leverage who you are against who you thought you were. Uh, both in your personal life as well as in business. Leadership, you know, allows men to lead themselves through the future. It's here. We're going to access uh, and empower 
you through a power empowerment assessment through live community. Yep. Design uh, to provide awareness. Yep. Yep. Help you uh, better be aware of your how your behavior impacts others as well as you as a leader. We're going to offer you some insights to how you can become the great and phenomenal leader that you desire. Yep. So leadership here, um, it's, it's uh, we, we're going to pull back some layers. Let's just say that we're going to identify your strengths. We're going to we're going to tap into uh, some personal limitations. Uh, we're going to help you gain clarity and direction that's going to move you forward. That the shift in leadership, of course, is an acronym that stands for seizing opportunities. Leaders heighten awareness sense of awareness leaders identify personal blind spots leaders focus on personal growth and leaders take action on things that are in most important to them as for your boy man i'm just a dude from miami yep miami florida who god decided to cho or chose to shower his grace on it was 2014 when i was sitting on the back of my porch simply trying to figure life out Today, guys, I help leaders, men, obtain their greatest potential so they can thrive and live out walking out their God-given purpose. I think it's some essential things towards leadership. I really help leaders craft a vision for success. I help them put a strategy and plan and fiercely execute towards their dreams so they can maximize on their full potential. Yeah. So today, we're talking seizing opportunity yep seizing the opportunity to lead just a simple leadership really in a nutshell begins with you and as leaders we have to ask ourselves where are the opportunities for me to lead myself well you know what 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 are the, where are the opportunities to help you lead yourself well so there's a story in a good book, man, uh, in, uh, in 2 Samuel 23, chapter, chapter 23, verse 20, where it tells us a story about this fabulous or fierce warrior by the name of Benai. Now, Benai got some real incredible dude in this book. And while I'm in the, in the word of God, right? Uh, however, there's a small section that really highlight who Benai is. Is. It doesn't really give you much detail, but you can glean enough to understand that one, um, uh, Benai was a dude you ain't want to mess with. <laughs> he was fierce. He, he was a, he, he, he was a fighter. Uh, he, he wanted to be the best. Uh, so much so that uh, he was even uh, handpicked by King David to be part of King David's fierce 100. So D King David had 100 bodyguards who were the best of the best. Yep, they, they were phenomenal in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They were his bodyguards, he, and, and they were his leaders, right? And Benai was one of those 100s. Now, I can't tell you if he was number 99 or he was number two in the rankings, but I can tell you he measured up to be counted in as the best right and this guy in the, in the book of uh second samuel uh chapter 23 they talk about him chasing a lion on a cold snowy day into a cave now who really dresses up phenomenally is mark battison in his book chase the lion um uh chase chase the lion he talks about benign right and uh one thing he highlights is that most people who've come face to face with a lion run <laughs> how many of you when we come face to face with a lion will run <laughs> now all the time we told well don't run because it'll chase us that's what that's what he wants you to do just play dead you know well i i don't know <laughs> playing dead might be might work too <laughs> i'm not against that i might be as still as i can possibly be <laughs> with a little liquid running down my leg i mean, i don't know i don't know i don't know what i would how that what that that would look like but i know one thing i'm not chasing a lion that's what i do know and i don't know about you 
but I'm not running in a cave on a cold snowy day in no flip flops and a, and a knife. <laughs> <laughs> that's because that's all he had at that time right he he didn't have a bang bang shoot him up you know he had a he had flip-flops and a knife and he chased a lion into a cave <laughs> and so i i just think this this is a phenomenal story about this guy but what i really the essence of what i really want to bring out to you and ask how many of us are lion chasers where are my lion chasers in the house? If you are a lion chaser, yep, you 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 you're not scared to go after anything in life. No, you know, no obstacle too big. If you are a lion chaser in the chat, just put LC lion chaser. <laughs> yep, yep. And for the rest of us, let's ask the question. Yeah, why aren't we chasing lions? Is it because they 500 pound beasts that, that can cause a wreck havoc? I mean, when I last looked, lions were predators. They were doing the chasing. I got a phenomenal video that I, I often share with others um, about lions and how fierce they are and, 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 and how tactical they are or stealth they are, um, how they maneuver, you know, uh, when on the prowl, you know. And, and, and here it is, this guy is chasing a uh, lion now i need you to understand what lions uh, represent in today's society or time right today lions look like obstacles <laughs> anybody got a 500 pound challenge in their life anybody got yeah f today lions look like I, i'm just not sure if i can overcome this situation I'm not sure how I can. I don't know if I have what it takes to start the business. Yeah, that's what a lion look like today. <laughs> the, what's your 500 pound challenge that just seems unsurmountable? That seems like you not you don't know what you got to do to to win in this situation. You don't know if you're going to come out on the other side unscathed. <laughs> you don't you don't know if you might lose everything that you have because this lion that you're facing is fierce. He knows you chasing him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, matter of fact, he peeking behind. He watching you. You think you watching it, but it's watching you. You know, what's the opportunity in your life that you need to seize? Because leaders seize opportunities to lead. Just that simple. See, Greg Rochelle said it like this, and I believe he, he sums it up pretty phenomenally for me, right? He says this, problems are opportunity to seize something great. Oh, I love that. Problems are opportunities to seize something great. Man, you know, as I moved into 2023, the one thing that I told myself, the word that came to me uh, for 2023 is to be better. I just want to be the better version of me. Anybody desire just to be better? <laughs> Anybody just want to be better? Huh? I'm just curious to know who wants to be better. Anybody? Anybody want to be better? I don't know. How, what happened there? There we go. Anybody want to be better? Yeah. That's what it is all about. Just becoming better. And sometimes to be better, we're going to have to face some challenges. We're going to have to uh, uh, overcome our obstacles in life. Yep. And there's, there's a beauty in facing your obstacles and facing your challenges in life. There's a beauty in coming face to face with your 500 pound problem. And here's that beauty. It's the opportunity to lead yourself well. It's the opportunity to seize and do something great. Who doesn't want to be phenomenal? Who doesn't want to be better? Yep. What area in your leadership do you want to achieve better? <laughs> yeah. What area in your leadership do you want to achieve better? For me, 
Uh, yeah. um, when, when I moved into 2023 and, and I said, hey, I want to be better. The truth is I wanted to be I wanted to be a better uh, leader or uh, yeah, I want to be a better leader than I was the day before. Yep. I wanted to be better than the day the, uh, that I was the day before. And here, here, here's a prime example of that. Here's a prime example of that. Yesterday was Friday. I jumped up out of bed, um, got, got ready to kick my day off, excited about where the day was heading, had some things that I, on my agenda that I wanted to get accomplished. And what I did was I threw on a pair of sweats. Uh, I put on the, the, the sweat jacket or the sweat, sweat top. And I told myself, man, I'm just going to chill. I said, I'm just going to chill. And, and because I was, uh, I told myself I was going to chill while I knew I had other things to do. The truth was, or is that I didn't accomplish all that I wanted to accomplish yesterday because I had the mindset to chill. I didn't I didn't wake up with the fervency and fire to seize an opportunity. I didn't wake up with a mindset to say, what can I how how can I make impact today in the world? What's how do I desire to be the difference maker? How will I lead myself phenomenally well moving throughout my day? I didn't wake up with that mindset. I, that's not what I told myself. I told myself that I'm going to chill. And you know. I would work with a lot of guys that uh, oftentimes when I check in with them and, and we we talking and I ask them what they've been doing and you know what they tell me? I've been chilling. <laughs> Listen, guys, chilling don't chilling chilling don't get the bills paid. Yep, chilling don't help you overcome obstacles. Chilling <laughs> keep you stuck, keep you limited, keep you where you are, right? And that's where I was. Now, this is this is interesting. This is interesting because the truth of the matter, I I, I wasn't stuck. I wasn't. I, I just didn't. I just didn't follow through and complete everything that I, I that was on my plate, right? Uh, because I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I, like I said, I didn't. I didn't prep my mind to to move in a certain way or fashion. And if you're going to be a leader to seize opportunity, if you're going to be the leader to seize and lead yourself well. Each day, guys, we have to get to this place where we understand what our leadership, the impact that we desire to make. So watch this. This morning when I woke up, guys, when I woke up, uh, I, I immediately jumped in the shower, got myself together. I pulled, I pulled, I pulled my sweater out. I got the brim right. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I pressed my clothes and, and I said, you know what? I'm coming to influence. I'm coming to make impact. Yep. I'm about to encourage change today. <laughs> Listen to what I'm telling you. And that mindset, that mindset has flowed through me, giving me more energy, help me stay more focused, giving me more fervency. Yeah. Fire to make the impact, to be the change maker that I desire. And I and I focused this morning, <laughs> ready to, to to find the opportunity to lead myself well. So, so prerequisites of good leadership is one in our personal leadership. Yep, um, there's something about growing in self awareness. There's something about operating from a place of authenticity. Yep, it's something about identifying true virtue. Yep, there's something about having personal values that you stand by. There's something about becoming congruently who you were called to be. Yep, and that's what I want to help and talk to you guys about today. Be identifying that virtue, tapping into uh, your personal values and making the congruent alignment for yourself to show up as your authentic self. This way, as you do this, you tap into more of 
your potential and purpose for living and for life. Just as simple. So my question, here's a question. What is the, your definition or what is the de definition of leadership? Now, I got it. We got some we got some 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 phenomenal people out there who really bring the life the 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 word leadership right um I, and i love this word i love this word however oftentimes when we think of leadership we we, we think of leadership from an external point of view you know um people people think leaders tell people what to do think people think leaders are the people in charge Anybody, anybody think that? Phenomenal. It's great. That, however, that's not leadership. That's not leadership. That's not. That's not leadership. Yeah, that, leaders do that, <laughs> but that's not. That's not my ideal definition for leadership, right? And so, as I, I, as I was as developing myself, and as I was growing into this essence of a leader that I desired to be, I understood this: that leadership is influence yep leadership is influence yep leaders set the examples for others to follow leaders the truth of the matter is that people do what they see leaders do yep. whether that's leading your family whether that's leading in business or in community uh, it's all about leading Leaders, uh, leading yourself and what leadership looks like to you. And so I've got a quick show of hands, man, in the chat. If you do not see yourself as a leader, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Go ahead, drop, 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 drop the two in the chat for me. Yeah, I just don't see myself as the leader. You know, I'm not in charge of nobody. I just get up and I just go to work. Yeah, I don't tell people what to do. I'm not a leader. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not in charge of anything. You know, uh, matter of fact, when I just whatever they have me to do at work, I'm just doing it. You know, <laughs> Any, anybody out there don't see themselves as a leader. You know, and, and yep. Gosh, it's all right. It's all right. Here, here's my word to you. Here's my word to you. Um, first off, you are a leader. In every essence of what leadership is, and leadership is in everything that we do. You know, the first person that you lead each day is you. Just that simple. Think about it. When you get out of bed, um, some of us go wash our face, brush our teeth, right? Some of us go take a shower, get dressed, or find our clothes, what we're going to wear, and iron them, right? right? Some of us fix breakfast, right? Um, we're leading. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. We're leading ourselves because the truth is uh, what's important to us is our hygiene. Yep, yep. I, I want to have fresh breath. You know, I, I want I want my clothes to look good on me. You know, um, I want to eat healthy, right? I'm leading myself in a healthy way leader you're a leader <laughs> don't nobody just get up and run out and don't brush their teeth you know what i'm saying well like and, and we just not running out the door to go to work or close uh, uh, uh work or work or school uh looking any kind of way right we, we taking time we, we put some thought into what we want to do how we want to look um shucks if if you if if you, if you got daughters or, or wife she spent some she's been about at least 20 30 of them in front of the mirror getting that you know, getting it right, you know, she, she's spending time getting it right. The lipstick, the makeup, the eyelash, you know, <laughs> I'm surrounded around women. So I see it all day, right? Uh, that's what they're doing, you know, and as the leader of the home, right? And maybe you, you know, you got your kids around you. Maybe you got your significant other. When, when they see you taking care of you, you know, uh, seeing that hygiene is important to you guess what else be what happens yep hygiene becomes important to them why because people do what they see leaders do so whether you believe it or not whether you accept it or not ready here it is you are leading everyone has the potential to lead yep 
And this is what it is uh, where we're talking about leaders seize, seize this opportunity to lead. Now, yeah, we, we seize opportunity, but opportunity shows up in different forms and fashions. It can be that lion, that 500 pound obstacle in your way, you know, uh, opportunity might be uh, uh, how, how you serve on your job. Yep. That, that opportunity may look like how you lead in your community or in your church. You know, I'm just saying, what is it that you're doing that you're sending that opportunity? Simple holding the door open for someone. Oh, come on, somebody. The, the opportunity to lead well might be just bringing somebody a glass of water. I mean, it's leadership in every essence of what we do and who and who we are. And so I, I want to challenge you and, uh, and, and to take some time and think, get your pen and paper and ask yourself, what's my personal definition of leadership? What's my personal definition of leadership? What's your personal definition of leadership? Then, once you write that down, I want you to ask yourself, what do I need to develop within me when it comes to my personal leadership? What do I need to develop? I shared with you as I moved into 2023 that my word for me uh, uh, was to become better, to be better. Each day, I wanted to be better than the day I was yesterday, right? And, and to become better, I had to ask myself, what areas in my life did I want to be better in? Where did I want to be better, right? And, and a few, three things came to me. Three things came to me. One, I wanted to have a better faith walk. Yep. I wanted to have a better connection with God. I wanted to grow my relationship spiritually yeah learning to to be more faithful but trusting allowing god to lead me more that's that what that's that's the essence of being better all right that's the essence of being better um another area in my life that i wanted to to improve on another area in my life i wanted to improve on was that that of my family i wanted to build better family relationships oh how many of us can can really uh, use that uh, uh, that, uh, that yeah build better family relations? How many of us can really can think you know what yeah I I can do that I can I should I need to build better that be that might be something I'm interested in better just better better you know and, and and you can think about it for yourself what area in your life do you think that you want to improve you know. Where can you improve your leadership? And I want you to consider these. You can think of, uh, consider uh, faith. You can consider family. Yep, you can consider finances. Maybe you'll consider your future, your career. Yep, you might even consider what type of fun. Yeah, what type of fun you wanna have with your family. What, yeah, think about that. What, 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 where do you want to develop in? What area in life do you want to develop? And, and, and realize that it's you, you're developing your leadership in this position. How do I show up? Do I want to show up in this area? How do I want to perform in this area? What do I want others to perceive and know about me in this time, this season, when it comes to uh, uh, building stronger family relationships, when it comes to having a stronger faith walk with God, what what do I what what do I want that to look like? Yeah, that's what I want you to do. That's what I, I identify de define leadership from your personal perspective, and then ask yourself what area do I need to develop in. You know, most folks simply think of of, of leadership in the terms of position. Um, and, and and we don't see ourselves as leaders. I tapped on that already, right? But um, but realize that leadership is being able uh, to lead yourself well before you start trying to lead other people. That's the, that's that's a very important aspect of leadership. Learn to start leading yourself well before you start trying to lead others, right? Here's another principle of leadership, man. That the truth of the matter is you owe yourself 
to become the best leader you can be. Yep. You owe you, as E.T. would say it. <laughs> you owe yourself to become the best leader you can be. Because whether you believe it or not, someone else is counting on you to step up and be the better you. Ooh, who is that for? Who is that for? Think about that. That's another question you can ask yourself. Who do I need to be a better leader for? Mm. Food for thought, right? Good food for thought. So here it is. H how do we become a better leader, right? Two perspectives here I want to, I want to give you, man. Two perspectives to helping to gr developing uh, the leader within and, and crafting and becoming the leader that God has called you to be. Um, and that is one, realize that you as a leader, um, when it comes to leading yourself well, you must have a positive view on what leadership looks like to you. You gotta get you gotta get a positive view of what leadership looks like to you. So here is here is, or as well as not just leadership, but also success. What success looks like to you, right? And so here here's my my outlook on success. Often the the world has told us that success looked like having a big bank, much money, securing a bag. Success for some people look like having your name in lights. Success for others people look like being well known and, and, and um, making and everybody know my name, so to speak. You know, for me, that's not success. That's not that, that doesn't make me successful because I got um, um, plenty of money. You know, now, now don't get me wrong. Don't I don't have the wrong idea about money. I think you need money. I think you need money to uh, to produce the uh, the results that God has called you to 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 bring forth fruition. And, and and watch this. You may not always have the money, but if you can tap into your your leadership potential, and somebody can and start getting hold of your vision. Yep. All of a sudden, people start pouring and depositing into what you believe in and want to support what you do because you live at your life from this perspective, right, of creating the vision. But I don't want to get into that. Hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. I want you to get to this first. I want you to understand that uh, that what does success look like? Success for me simply looks like um, being able to do what's in your heart to do accomplish what you say you're going to accomplish it could be as simple as you know um and, and, yeah th it can be as simple as saying hey today uh at 10 o'clock i'm going to get a haircut you know guess what i'm not going to get a haircut at 10 45 i'm i'm not where at, i'm doing at 10 o'clock everything stop i'm at the barbershop i'm i'm ready to get i'm ready to get tightened up I made a successful successful move. The small measures, the small things. I think sometimes we get we get disconnected because we have these big visions. We got these big ideas that we want to accomplish in life and we chase after the the the, the larger aspects of life, but we don't focus on the little things in life, you know what I mean? And and these little things, right? These little small things create create um uh, a success measure they, they create um yeah they create success after success creates more success right if i can accomplish one thing and i know i can accomplish two things right if i can accomplish two things i know i can accomplish number three you know what i mean and, and sometimes we try to jump to the largest things in life versus staying focused on the little things that we need to get right in our life right i got it leaders craft vision i got it leaders are have our big pictures Pick people, they 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 see a broader scope of things, right? Some some leaders are visionaries, right? Some leaders are visionaries, and because we have these big ideas, and because we start focusing on big i thing, uh, big ideas, we don't focus on the little things that truly matter. We don't we don't we don't see that intrinsic value of leadership. Oh, uh oh, did, did y'all get what I said? I said, you don't, we, we, we miss the intrinsic value of leadership. Seizing opportunity isn't all just about uh, going and just accomplishing things, but it's accomplishing things within the value of importance. Yep. 
It's seizing things. It's, 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 it's accomplishing those things that truly matter to you. Not getting sidetracked. You know what I'm saying? Stem, um, growing in this place of self-awareness and authenticity. Yeah. It's growing in this place of self-awareness where we understand our strengths. We understand our talents. We understand our, our giftedness. You know, we understand we 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 drawing to this place of purpose. Yep. We know we know what makes us phenomenally us. We we tapped into and know, know what our are and, and we have a, um, a understanding of our blind spots or our weaknesses, things that might might uh, hold us up, things that I may not be so good at, you know. I understand these things and I understand what authentically makes me me. And that's this place of virtue. This that's this place of personal values. It's this place where we develop congruently in our life. Developing authenticity of who God has called us and created us to be. Yep. That's what I want to talk to you guys about about today is is getting to this place of self-awareness and authenticity. Yep. For, and, and understanding what the true measure of leadership looks like when it comes to seizing opportunity is that of this place of virtue. Is that good? If that's good, man, in the chat, drop in the chat. Let me know what you think. What's resonating with you? What What's some of your thoughts on this right now? Yep, yep, yep. Talk to me in the chat. Leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know. If it's good, drop a fire. You know, if, if you don't have a fire bomb, just put G-O-O-D in the chat for your boy. And we're going to share my screen. All right, so I'm going to be off camera for this one, guys. As you can see, uh, this is the leadership and seizing opportunities because the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter, the opportunity to seize is the ability to lead yourself well. And what you're saying, you see that little picture in the background, man, uh, uh, the young men, the silhouettes of the black, the young men in black and, and, and uh, the silhouette up from them going from, from, um, male to men <laughs> is that good from male to men it's all about direction man it's all, all about uh tapping into community purpose and fellowship man that is what's really truly near and dear to my heart i had this um uh, this uh logo or this for a t-shirt actually it was i started out as a logo right um but i put it on the t-shirt uh this was what this was my vision uh, for men um, helping men develop into what God has called them to, you know, um, getting hold of their God given direction, understanding what God has saying to them, yeah, through his word, understanding what it looks like to build community amongst other like minded men who are going in and moving in the same direction in which they're moving, tapping into this thing called purpose, yeah, and growing in fellowship. And brotherly love, not just with one another, but also in our faith. Yeah. So seizing opportunity. Here, here, here's, here's a quote uh, by uh, John, uh, not John, Mark Twain. And Mark Twain said this: <clears throat> The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Is that good? The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Guys, man, I, I think Mark Twain got this one right. I promise you. And I say that because um, it's, it's, it's really, truly about tapping into to purpose, man. Um, I simply recall driving down the street um, and, and, and in the back of my mind, or maybe in my subconscious, I'm certain that I had to be praying about something. You know, Lord, what did you call me to? Why, what, what, what's, why am I here? What do I need to be doing that I'm not doing? What's the questions that I, I simply 
uh, belief that, that was I was asking myself subconsciously, right? And as I'm driving, as I'm driving, it became real clear why I was here. Yep, and it became real clear. And it was, I hear the voice of the Lord say to me in that moment and in that time that your gift is to speak. Your gift is to speak. And it was in that moment and in that time that I just wailed like a baby. Like what? I was called to speak, you know? Um, it, and it brought me back to this place. It brought me back to a, uh, uh, it brought me back to a place of remembrance. Um, some, some years, years prior, about maybe a little, about maybe a year and a half prior, uh, I was sitting in county lockup. I did 60 days in county lockup and, um, I just remember looking around the pot and <laughs> I'm looking up and I'm looking down and watching. We, I'm, I'm surrounded about 50, maybe 75 dudes in, in a pot. And God asked me then, what do you see? And of course, the, the answer was simple. Men, they're everywhere. <laughs> some were reading books. Some were gathered together, making noise. Others were secluded in their rooms. Uh, um, talking and laughing and joking around. Uh, others were in conflict, some behind behind the cameras or behind closed doors, whatever the case may be, right? All kind of foolery going on in this environment, right? And I just, you know, and God's saying to me, what do you see? And I say, men, I say, I see men. Then he said, what else do you see? And I'm looking, you know, I'm, I'm looking and I, and, you know, I, I, I describe what I see and guys, you know, guys reading books, some guys writing letters, some dudes talking on phones, whatever the case may be. And I said, I see guys with potential. I see guys with potential, you know, uh, and if you know about any dudes in, dudes in jail or in prison, they be about making moves, man. <laughs> they don't always be the best moves, but. <laughs> they, 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 you can see that they, they have this ingenuity in, in creativity about them, right? And I said, I see guys with potential, right? And here, here's what the word of the Lord said to me. Here's what God said to me. And you are one of them. Man, that pierced. Because I was in this place, in this moment, in this time. I was in a, I, 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 I was, I was stuck. I was in this place in this time where I, 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 I lack a little direction. I couldn't go nowhere. I, you, you, you couldn't move freely. Yep. You're struggling with some of the challenges of life. You're trying to figure out and you're trying to, you're trying to do what you think you should do, but everything you're doing, it ain't adding up because you haven't got to this place of virtue, values, and congruency in your life, Dwayne. Any any Dwayne's out there? <laughs> you, you ain't got to this place of virtue, values, and congruency. Your life is out of alignment. And you're trying to figure it out, and you can't figure out why you can't get it to align. This is where I was. And it appears. And I knew at that moment and that time that God had something more for me. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't know what it was, but 12 months later, I found myself uh, at home, sitting on the back of my porch, trying to figure life out. I was stuck. I felt limited. I lacked direction. And if I can be honest with you, I just wanted to make my next move in life my best move in life. But how was I going to do it when I didn't know what to do? I got it. Got 15 years of military experience. I got it. <laughs> got the degree. Yeah, I got it. Got the wife and the kids. But I still didn't feel as though I was leading or that I was an effective leader. I didn't feel that. I didn't feel it. I felt broken. I felt hopeless. I felt challenged. I can only wonder what David felt like when his brother threw him in the hole, <laughs> you know, to only sell him away. 
you know and many of us are in the hole right we're trapped in a hole and we won't even try to get out we ain't looked up once we ain't tried to climb we just sit there waiting hoping somebody come along and, and look in a hole and say oh do you need some help Everybody's looking for this thing, uh, 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 looking for a place of help, but we won't help ourselves. We we won't put one rock on top of another rock, on top of another rock, or a rock on top of another rock, or a rock on top of that rock, and see if we can climb ourselves out of that that situation uh, 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 or where we are in. We just sit there stagnant. We sit there stuck. We sit there limited. This is the place that jail this is the place that prison have men in they're stuck they're limited they can't think for themselves they can't make they, they're not they're not making um um decisions for themselves somebody tell them when to wake up when to go get, go to bed they're stuck and then they get out and they're asking themselves what's next how do i make my move my next move my best move how many men are living in this place where we're stuck we got this job going on. We're trying to make this trick trick happen. Yep. We, we, we're trying to fulfill this hope. Yep. And we're neglecting everything else around us. Yep. We, get, we, we, we developing all this anxiety. We got all of this emptiness because we, we, we're not operating from a place of purpose. We're not tapping into what we've been called to do. We don't know our gifts. We don't know what we're talented at. Yeah, that's exactly where I was. And I was listening to the tunes of Otis Redding, man. And Otis said it the best, man. He said, sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tides roll away. Sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time now i got it i just gave you the hook but you can get the meaning of the message behind it it was in that moment it was in that time that i realized that i was allowing my life to pass me by listen guys we got to get out of this rut of this pity party for ourselves we got to get out of this rut of making excuses and pointing the fingers at everybody else and we got to get to this place Will we begin to identify the leader within? We got to get to this place where we seize the opportunity, yep, to take charge of our life. We got to get to this place where we can develop the virtue, the, print, the values, and congruency of alignment so we can draw to the place of purpose and maximize our potential. So I want to talk to you about virtue. <laughs> Y'all ready? Let's get it. Virtue. So what's the definition of virtue? Conformity to a standard of right. Virtue is moral excellence. Virtue is beneficial quality. Virtue is strength and courage <laughs> manly strength and courage virtue is the capacity to act i want to help you with this i need to i want to i want to unwrap this one for you it's not difficult to see what virtue is right but i started this 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 segment out with the story of benai chasing the lion on a cold snowy day and i read this book some three four years ago and i promise you i've been asking myself virtually every day why in the world would this dude benai chase this lion in a cave on a cold snowy day and i realized the very essence of why benai was chasing the lion on the snow on in the snow on a cold snowy day because he understood his purpose oh. <laughs> That's good, man. That was good to me. Write that down. I need to understand my purpose. He understood his purpose. This guy was a fierce fighter. He was a soldier in King David's army. He was the elite. You don't become the elite because you're doing it how everybody else doing it. 
<laughs> Who did that? Write that down. You don't become the elite because you do it like everybody else. You become the elite because you could conform to a standard that is better. That's right. He had moral excellence. He desired to be the best that he could be. So much so, so much so, he was had his eyes on King David. Now, if we know anything about King David, and I know you heard the stories just like I did. King David was pretty pretty bad dude as a young lad. Matter of fact, scripture said he, he had done killed the bears. He had done killed the lions. Ready? Leaders do what they see other leaders do. Come on, leaders. Where are my leaders at in the house? My, my man wanted, he said, you know what? If I'm going to work for this guy, if I'm going to protect this king, King David, the, the leader of all leaders, I need to do what, lead, what, what leaders do. And at that moment, that time, in that season, leaders was chasing bears. Leaders was killing lions. And my man said, hold on, I got to get home and chase my lion. What's the obstacle that you need to face to develop the leader in you? What obstacle do you need to face? to draw more excellence out of you? What obstacle do you need to face to build quality character, to tap into your strength and courage? My man chased that lion because he wanted to become the courageous and authentic leader he saw in David and that he desired in himself. Virtue. Come on. Is that good? Come on, talk to me in the chat. If that's good, let me know. Let, let, somebody say, okay, I got you. I'm feeling you. If you're feeling me, go ahead. Dr drop, drop the fire bombs. Hit me with the, I'm feeling you. <laughs> I'm feeling you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Listen, next, next, next. Here it is. Value. What's the definition of value? Now, oftentimes we think value and we, the first thing comes to mind is money. Of course, Web, Webster says value is the monetary worth of something. Uh, value is something of importance. Value is a fair return or equivalent on the goods and services, right? The exchange of something, value. Value, get hold of this, get your pens, your paper, ready? Re value is the principle and quality of something. I wanna help somebody, I wanna help somebody. I'm a, what do you value? What's important to you? I recently sat with a coachee or a client and he was sharing with me all the things that he had going on, you know, entrepreneur, um, multiple businesses, multiple streams of business income coming in. Um, and, and he was passionate about doing more. Yeah, he was finding himself um, in this place of anxiety, you know, um, not finding time to uh, for his family, but over, you know, just working, 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 try, trying to meet the demands of what he thought he wanted. And lo and behold, his family came to him and said, hey, yo, Pop, listen, man, can I, can I be 100 with you? <laughs> we don't get none of your time. And my man said to me, he said, D, it stung when I heard that. It hurt. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm here, I'm in the house. And it's, they say, yeah, but you always working. And, and the look in his eye, I promise you, uh, he, he probably wanted to cry. Because I, I could see the pain. I can see how it affected him when, 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 that, when, it, when the family members came to him and told him, hey, listen, we, 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 just need more, we just need more of our dad. We just need more of our husband. Yeah, we just want to have a good, we just want to live life with you right now. 
You know, I, 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 got, I can just see that pain in his face uh, at that moment and, and in that time. And he said to me, he said, but Dwayne, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I got this thing that I'm driven to get done. And I, and I, I got this dream and I got this vision and I want to make this happen. And I talked to some of my friends and they gave me some advice, but that didn't really pan out for me too good. And I'm at this rocking hard place for myself, man. And I just need to make my next move in life my best, but I don't know what to do. How many of us in that place? How many place, How many of us hurting here? That's where he was. <laughs> I ask, I ask one simple question. <laughs> uh, and, and, it, and it triggered the light bulb for him. And that question was, What's important to you? Why are you doing what you're doing? Does it align with your purpose? And in that moment, you can see the his face went from a frown to a smile. You can see the, the, the weight that was hanging on his back lift up and his chest poke out. And he sat up and he looked in the camera and said, yo, nobody never asked that question. My dudes ain't, they ain't bring this to me. My dudes didn't say that. He said, you, you just, you just, you just gave me clarity. I can see it now. I value my family. It's what he said. He valued his family and realized for himself that for him to, to, to be able to reach the things and the levels of life and success that he desired, he had to get, identify the virtue and establish the values for himself. I need to, I want to help you with values, help you with values. Values are principles that guide you. Yep. They help you stay within the framework of where you're going. They help you not lean and do things that you probably wouldn't do because they aren't who you desire to be. It's it values go against the very essence of who you are. And when things start going against your values, all of a sudden you start feeling the pressures in life. You start feeling the stressors in life and you can't move like you want to move and you can't make things happen how you want to make them because you are out of alignment. You're out of alignment. You're out of alignment. And I just recall personally for myself, I would get teased by my loved ones and they will always bring up my past oh Dwayne you was a knucklehead Dwayne you didn't go to school you skipped school Dwayne was always in trouble <laughs> doing all kind of mischievous things and I said to them I said why y'all keep talking about my past and they just they just thought it was funny right they thought it was funny and and and, and they teased me and teased me and teased me and I realized this I realized this. The reason why it bothered me so much was because I was out of alignment. <laughs> Listen, when you are when you are operating from a place of virtue, when you are, are operating from a place of, of of your personal preferences and values, principles for your life, it develops congruency. It it develops alignment. It develops that you begin to get in alignment and many of us are out of alignment and therefore because we're out of alignment we feel stuck because we're out of alignment we don't have fresh ideas because we're out of alignment we're not doing it's taken my family generations to perfect the perfect curry okay uh, what happened here patax makes perfect Oh, there we go. I see. I got it. We get that off. Yeah, it it, it create it creates uh I don't know how that came up. Pop, let me get that off of my thing. There we go. Um it it, it creates a, a imbalance in the lot in our life, man. And I and I just understood that shucks. There there has to be there has to be congruency. There has to Yep, let's talk, let's talk congruency. Let's talk congruency. Come on. Let's see. Let's go. Is this good? If this is good, talk to me in the chat. Let me know. Bam, congruency. Yep. Or congruent. 
What is the definition of congruent? Being in agreement. Ready? Being in harmony. Yep. Appreciate, I mean, appropriate conformity to the circumstances or requirements of a situation. Congruent. And that's what I realized for myself, that we had to get to this place of aligning our purpose, our actions, our intrinsic values to being growing in self-awareness. Yep, growing in self-awareness, identifying your authenticity. Who do you desire to be is what it's all about. Is that good? Yeah. I hope I hope I hope that's good. I hope that's good. I hope that's good, man. Uh, so here, 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 here. I, I, um, so. Da, 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 da. Yep, yep, yep. I want I want to I want to tap back on. Um, oh, yeah. So let's yeah, here we go. Virtue, virtue, virtue. So leading with being able to lead with virtue, right? Being able to lead uh, with virtue is that we as leaders have to understand that um, we must have this desire to lead our lives simply more effectively. Um, leading from this place of virtue, virtue, um, you must have this mindset to develop yourself. Um, leading from this place of virtue is understanding that that you have uh, that you have the passion to lead others to a new or higher height in life. Well, yeah, you have to have a, pa a, pra a, a, a passion to lead others. This place of virtue, right? You don't have to understand or know or think that you're a leader. Yeah, you can just, just just come as you are. Identify for yourself who you are. You know, this place of virtue is um, a phenomenal for emerging leaders, those who are developing into their leadership capacity. This place of virtue is a great place for um, middle li level leaders, mid level leaders, and senior leadership to better uh, uh, to 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 better practice. Yep, uh, their leadership, right? And so. It's all about just simply learning who we are and how we choose to lead. How do we, who we are and how we choose to lead. I want to give you, I, I, I asked you this question. What was the definition of leadership, right? And I want to share this with you. I want to share this real with you as we get ready to close this thing out, right? So I've been doing a, I've been doing an in-depth study, uh, leadership, uh, from the inside this is something this is not new to me uh this is something that i truly that god has given me from from the time i started this is to uh, identify my authenticity uh of who i desire to be how i desire to show up man and some of that authentic authenticity for me is like i said uh, developing a stronger faith walker de uh, developing a um a, yeah um a, a stronger faith walk um as well as um, building stronger relationships, right? And here in the uh, this, the the book written by Kevin Cashman, right? By Kevin Cashman, Le leadership from the inside out. He talks about the uh, what is a foundational, what is foundational to the most effective producing leaders. I'll read that again. What is foundational to most effective producing leaders and this is the study they found this is what they found one they found that uh there's three patterns that help that leaders must become clear on right one they must develop the courage and authenticity did y'all get that one they must develop courage and authenticity this is that place where benai was he was developing the courage and authentic authenticity authenticity as a leader that he desired to be he wanted to be great he wanted to follow in um, the steps of uh, phenomenal leadership so this is what this means courage and authenticity authenticity means having the courage to be your whole self complete with strength vulnerabilities and differences having the courage to authentically 
show up with openness and integrity. Come on, you got to say that's good. This is, I mean, I can't make this up. This is exactly what I believe God has been calling me to, right? And, and then number two, the third pattern that clear leaders must be clear on is that of influence. I told you in the beginning as I start this thing is on I came I came to be an influencer. I want to influence you, right? I want to influence you to operate from a place of purpose. Yep, I want you to tap into your full potential. Here it is what it means to influence. It means purpose-driven communication that inspires not just yourself but others. Ready? To do what is important and meaningful. Come on, somebody. <laughs> this guy, come on, if this good, come on, drop the G in the chat for your boy. Let me know. Let, let me know. Lastly, the third pattern that leaders must do to become clear is they must value creation, meaning that they're serving multiple uh, constituencies. Not just themselves, but they're serving the team. They're serving their family. They're serving their community. They're serving their, their job or their organization. They are in service to the world. They, they are uh, at this place where they're performing and contributing, contributing to uh, success. They're being, their, they're being the, the best that they can be for the world, for others, for their family. Now, here's the definition. Here's the definition, a new definition on leadership. Now, I don't wanna take nothing away from John Maxwell and any of the other thought leaders when it comes to leadership. I think it's phenomenal. It's great. I, I shucks, it helped me get to where I am today, right? But watch this. Here's a different outlook on leadership. And this is the definition. Leadership is courageous authentic influence that creates enduring value. <laughs> I love it. Leadership is courageous, authentic influence that creates enduring value. Yeah. So what do you value? What's the opportunity that you need to face? What's that 500 pound lion in your life that you need to chase after to develop the leader within because leaders shift seizes opportunity to lead and leadership starts by first leading yourself well listen <laughs> your boy t-rock man listen that's good that's real good to, the, to your boy. And I hope this was enriching and impactful and empowerful for you as well. And if it was, man, leave me some comment, leave me a feedback, let me know what you think. And as I get ready to close this out, man, I want to share uh, something with you. I've been, you know, some guys been asking me lately, what are you reading? You know, uh, what, 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 you, you, be, you, you come, you be coming with this stuff. What are you reading? You know, and I'm like, man, I, I be true for the matter is I probably read about three or four books at a time, right? Um, I literally schedule time to read 30 minutes throughout my day, 30 minute increments throughout my day. I'm reading. First thing I do in the morning after prayer and my biblical studies is I read for 30 minutes, right? And so here are, uh, here, here is the book that I am currently reading. Yeah. The spiritual leader. I mean, the spiritual life of a leader. A God-Centered Leadership Style by Boyd Bailey. And Boyd, I want to share this quote with you, what Boyd says, man. I want, man, you, yeah, hold on. Let me share this quote, what Boyd says here. Boyd says, the best leaders have high level of spiritual maturity. They have learned to walk with God in intimacy and let that relationship spill into their leadership style. Come on, somebody. You can't tell me that's not good. That, yep. So listen, man, you're looking for a phenomenal book to read. Man, there you go. Come rock with your boy. Let's talk about it. The Spiritual Life of a Leader by Boyd Bailey. Second, well, another phenomenal book that uh that I I I shucks, man. I hate this one. I be wanting to read this one more over and over. And that's uh Male versus Man by DeAndre Whitfield. 
phenomenal. Some of y'all might recognize his face. I think he's a he, he, he's an actor. You see him on TV. R -r hands down, wrote a phenomenal book, man. Here, uh, empowering men. And this is what he says. Here's a quote. Here's a quote out of the book, uh, where he says, "God needs us to gain clarity so that we can take up a mission of sacrifice and service to help males become men." God needs men to have vision, the kind of vision that will allow us to walk in, in clarity uh, so that our children can grow up in homes with fathers. God needs men to walk in clarity. Yeah. Uh, so that they can help the incarcerated or justice involved brothers so that they break free the chains that put them behind bars. Clarity says DeAndre, is a central theme of everyday life of a man we intend to be. Yep, bro, you need clarity. You need you need the vision. You need to know where you're going. <laughs> Just that simple. So that's another phenomenal book, man. Listen, DeAndre Whitfield, Man Versus Man. Go get that phenomenal read. That's I read, y'all see it. And then lastly, man, I got to take my hat off to my, my, my man. And, um, uh, that, that, that's Smokey Northfield. Uh, take the lid off, man. Smokey Lo, uh, Northfield, where he says, take the lid off. And here's a quote. Here's a quote. <clears throat> it says, Smokey writes and says, our potential is a product of three overlapping and interconnected factors. One, character. Two, talent. Three, faith. If any of these are missing, our potential remains dormant. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, man. If that's good, and you know, let me know. But yeah, these are the three phenomenal books that I read, and of course, I, I um, I'm, I got him. He got him here too. Yep. Of course, I'm reading my man. If you ain't got it, you owe you. Where you at? There. Boom. You owe you by Eric Thomas, man. Eric, y'all y'all know the hip hop preacher. Phenomenal. Phenom phenomenal uh, um, speaker, uh, coach, uh, motivator. I, I, I'm trying to open a book to see if I, here we go. Here, here's a quote from uh, out of the book of UOU. He says, purpose is nothing without structure and standard. You need to discover your superpower and have the why. But if you don't impose structure and standards of your life, your purpose is without a path. Come on guys. Go get it. Listen, those are books I'm reading, man. You need to get hold of it. You know, I believe that each day that men should grow themselves, men should, men should challenge themselves, develop themselves in, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And before we close out, listen, I want to encourage you, never miss an opportunity to grow yourself. Um, connect with the leadership community. You know, um, this is the this community is where I believe men deserve a safe place to, uh, to talk out or talk about their frustration. It's uh, my passion to create a space for men. And that's why we created the Leadership Male Empowerment Community. You can be part of the Male Empowerment Community by simply going over to the webpage, DwayneHRoberts.com. There you can learn more. It's a community where men can grow and learn simple principles of becoming the better version of themselves. Come on, guys. Is that good? Well, listen, man, I don't want to take up no more of your time. I want to say thank you for taking time to rock with your boy. I encourage you, please share the feed, share the link, go to the web page, uh, become part of the community. Yep. And realize this, that your success is in your hands. Go out, have an amazing day with purpose. God bless.